Hey guys, today we'll be discussing coagulation cascade and I hope everyone is doing fine and everyone's knee PG, next PG preparation is right on track. You guys must be learning right approaches to solve questions, best mnemonics, best tricks to crack the knee PG exam. Today in this short video, we'll learn about the coagulation cascade. In next video, we'll learn about platelet function disorder. Right, in bleeding disorders, as you guys already know, there are two main causes related to bleeding. First one is due to deficiency of platelets or due to deficiency of clotting factors. And sometimes there is no deficiency of platelets, rather there is problem in platelet function. So there is bleeding, right? So you guys must be knowing that if there is deficiency of platelets or if function of platelet is compromised, then there will be increase in bleeding time. Whereas clotting factors make secondary hemostatic plug and if clotting factors are deficient or not effective then clotting time will increase. Clotting time can be further divided into APTT and again PT which can be also related to international normalized ratio that is INR. So you guys already know there are crazy amount of clotting factors and the clotting cascade is also very complicated. So today we will uncomplicate things and make it simple. I mean, I will not uncomplicate the relationship status. I will uncomplicate the coagulation cascade, right? So there are lot many clotting factors, right? I mean, 13 clotting factors involved in coagulation cascade. As you guys must be seeing in this video, there is contact with negatively charged proteins, right? So factor 12 gets activated. It activates factor 11, then nine, then eight. Then 8 from intrinsic pathway and 7 from extrinsic pathway activates factor 10. Now here starts the common pathway and ultimate goal is to activate fibrinogen that is clotting factor 1 into fibrin. So the clot is formed, it is further stabilized with clotting factor 13 into a stable clot. So in this clotting cascade you must be seeing intrinsic pathway, common pathway and the extrinsic pathway. So there are number of clotting factors, right? It is very hard to remember which clotting factors are involved in intrinsic pathway and which one are involved in extrinsic and common pathway, right? So today we will learn about a mnemonic which will make our life simple so that we will be able to memorize these clotting cascade and the <coughs> clotting factors involved in them for lifetime, right? So these are the clotting factors and this is intrinsic, extrinsic and common pathway. Here again we have one more diagram. Right here is intrinsic pathway, then we have extrinsic pathway. Intrinsic pathway again, factor 12 gets activated due to contact with negatively charged proteins, be it glass, be it collagen fibers, and then tissue factor, tissue thromboplastin activates factor 7, right? Then coagulation cascades moves and ultimately factor 10 gets activated. So you must be seeing that factor 10 is somewhere in between right in this center so this is factor 10 this is center of attraction right over a over period of time we will build a mnemonic right so this is the center of attraction this is the starting of common pathway this is factor 10 and ultimately fibrinogen gets converted into fibrin right so fibrin forms the clot and further factor 13 stabilizes it further leading to a stable clot right so what is the mnemonic? How can we learn all the clotting factors? How can we know whether these are intrinsic factors, extrinsic factors or the factors involved in common pathway? So we have, we have a simple mnemonic known as cascade home, right? So guys, let's go on, go for the mnemonic. So here my mnemonic is here we have a home. So intrinsic factors will be in, will be within this home. The center of the home is having factor 10 and as you guys already know this factor 10 is center of attraction from here starts the common pathway and ultimately factor 1 gets activated and the fibrin or clot is formed just have one more look of the intrinsic pathway then we have extrinsic pathway here we have factor 12 factor 11 factor 9 factor 8 Right here we have factor 7, these clotting factors activate factor 10 into 10A. Right and then 10A along with 5A activate factor 2 that is prothrombin into thrombin. And then thrombin activates fibrinogen into fibrin that is 1A. So finally the clot is formed. 
I suppose now this is quite simple how to learn intrinsic and extrinsic plotting factors. Let's coming on to again the mnemonic. Right, this is your home. So mark center, right, which will be like this across. This is factor 10, that is center of attraction. Right, this is not part of intrinsic cos coagulation cascade. This is just center of attraction. As you guys have already seen in the previous slide that 10th clotting factor is somewhere in the center of the coagulation cascade, right? So the other clotting factors which are which will be in this home, that is which will be in the home will be included in intrinsic pathway, right? So intrinsic pathway and outside we have extrinsic pathway. You just need to learn only one clotting factor that is factor 7, right? You keep this clotting factor outside this home. So this will be part of extrinsic coagulation cascade. Right now, 10th clotting factor is center of attraction, and you guys already know center of attraction is factor 10. This is not intrinsic factor. So, moving to right to left, right, you can have 8, 9, and 11, 12. So, 8, 9, 11, 12, two clotting factors left to 10, two clotting factors right to 10, right, will make the intrinsic clotting factors. And extrinsic we have factor 7 right and then from 10 starts the common pathway and just you can memorize that last two steps involve the first two plotting factors so here 2 gets activated into 2a that is prothrombin gets activated into thrombin and finally fibrinogen gets activated into fibrin and this is the clot right so common pathway starts from 10 10 is center of attraction, right? And then we have two factors right to 10, two factors left to 10, right? In continuation, excluding 10, right? These form the intrinsic pathway. Seven factor is left outside this home, so this will be part of extrinsic pathway. 10 along with 5, factor 5, activates prothrombin into thrombin. Two fives are 10, right? And last two, Last two steps involve first two clotting factors and ultimately we activate fibrinogen into fibrin. So it is quite easy to remember now, right? So this is very simple. Intrinsic <coughs> pathway includes two factors right to 10, two factors left to 10. So we have 8, 9, 11, 12. This will not include 10 because this is center of attraction. Then we have extrinsic pathway. In extrinsic pathway we have factor 7. These will activate common pathway that is 10 into 10a. So this is your center of attraction. This is common pathway, right? Then from 10, you move on to 2, 2 to 2a, then 1 into 1a. And here you have 5a. So by this simple mnemonic of home, you can memorize for your lifetime, what are the part of which clotting factors are part of intrinsic pathway and which one of them are part of extrinsic pathway. Suppose this is your intrinsic pathway, this includes 8, 9, then 11, 12. Then we have extrinsic pathway which will include 7. Then you will have common pathway which will include 10, 5, 2, 1. Right? And further, you also need to know about the clotting profile like APTT, PT and then INR. Right? So that you can later on come to conclusion that what is the disease, right, leading to abnormalities in the coagulation studies, right, and then further you can manage your patient accordingly, right. So you have intrinsic pathway. If intrinsic pathway is defective, I mean if any clotting factor which is involved in intrinsic pathway is missing, then it will lead to increase in APTT, activated partial thromboplastin time. If factor 7 is missing or not acting properly, then prothrombin time common pathway is if common pathway is defective then both will get deranged right that is prolongation of aptt and prothrombin time prothrombin time can also be used to measure inr so they both can be taken on one side so now guys by the help of this mnemonic we can figure out intrinsic pathway contains 8 9 11 12 these four clotting factors and extrinsic pathway carries Factor 7, factor 10, factor 2, factor 5 are the part of common pathway. So by the mnemonic of whom, I think you guys 
must be able to remember all the clotting factors and you can relate it to APTT, PT and then INR. Suppose a patient is having hemophilia A. In hemophilia A, clotting factor 8 will be deficient. So it means intrinsic pathway is involved, right? It means which will get prolonged APTT. Right. All other parameters of clotting profile will be normal. Right. So I hope I was able to communicate good enough mnemonic for your PG preparation. All the best guys. In next mnemonic, we will come up with platelet function disorders. Right. And I will advise you all study with lot of fun as guys around me are in very funny mood. So guys, what next? It's fun time. Okay guys, let's chill. It's your time. Bye guys.